should be in the Lord. And they didn't realize that the freedom that God wants to give us. And so this was a huge thing for, for, the, he, for the, um, uh, the, the Christians that weren't, that weren't um, uh, part of God's original plan, the Hebrews. And, and it was a very important thing to understand that God was using these people to bless his people. Amen? And, and so there was going to be a great famine in Jerusalem. And, and there was going to be a time where, where there was no, um, where people were going to have a hard time getting food and, and being able to survive through this famine, okay? And so a prophet um, had told them that this was coming. And so what happened is uh, the church, they set out to gather money. They set out to gather money and to gather resources so that they could take to Jerusalem what these people were going to need. Do you understand? And it's funny how God does things because he, 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 he wants equality with all of us. You know, the main thing that God showed me when I was reading this is that if anybody thinks they're above somebody else, they're wrong because they're not. Amen? And when you truly come to know who Christ is and who, who you are in Christ... Amen? Then others actually become more important than you. They really do. They become more important than you. It, it's amazing to me, but I learned a long time ago that I, I'll never win anybody to the Lord unless I put myself beneath them. See? And I learned a long time ago that if I don't live in that state, see, that I'll never be able to share the gospel with somebody who's going to listen. See? And where did Jesus? Jesus lived in that state. He literally lived beneath his creation so that he could redeem them, so that he could save them. Amen? See it? And, and, and what he's trying to tell the church here is, listen, he's trying to tell Corinthian, the church in Corinth. See, when, when, uh, about a year before this, when they first uh, went into Corinth to ask for money, they were the first ones to jump on board. They were the first ones to say, yeah, and they started, they started getting a collection together, you see? But over time, when, when we've been talking about this, when, when, when the world came into the church, they forgot about that joy. They forgot about that collection. They forgot about making things right. And it's like us today. You might hear something in a message, Harry, that excites you when you're here, see? And you should take that excitement not just uh, for that day, but you should take it into your life. It should become part of who you are. When God's Word comes alive, Harry, it comes alive in us. But it's only living and active if we choose it. Amen? And so you shouldn't just take it for today. You should take it for life. Everything you hear, we should embrace. Everything that we... That's, where, that's actually where our faith is. Our faith is in the things we believe in that we embrace. See? So it's not just for today. It's not just for this moment. Any time that God's Word speaks to your heart and, and changes something in you, it's, it's, it's an eternal change. Amen? Yeah. See? And um, God wants us to have equality that way. So I shouldn't get ahead of Kathy or, or Kathy get ahead of me, but I should appeal to Kathy to come to the understanding that I have in Christ. Amen? See, and sometimes, you guys, that's not just... Uh, 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 a spiritual act or a, uh, to bring somebody to an understanding, but sometimes you have to go further. Sometimes you need to help them where they're at. Amen? See, and God was working on the hearts of the Hebrew Christians to accept the Gentile Christians, right? We see it all through Scripture in the first part of Acts, right? We just, we, on Tuesday night, Peter had to go and explain himself because he went into a Gentile's house and brought the gospel where people were saved. And he had to go before the Sanhedrin. He had to go before the, the church. Amen? And he had to explain his actions. See? That's how strong what we're talking about is. And then the Corinthian church, who accepted Paul, who accepted Timothy, who accepted Silas, who accepted Titus, amen, a year ago, was now against them. Until Titus took the first letter to them. Amen? And, and Paul reminded them of who they are in Christ. 
This is another reminder. See, just a year ago, you guys were excited. What happened? What happened? See, those things are eternal to me. See, they should always be. You get it? The world's doing everything it can to steal that from you. But they should always be. And then when you see the world working in the lives of others around you, then you need to be the vessel God's calling you to be to help win them back. Just like Paul's doing in the Corinthian church. Just like he sent Titus. Just like other people that were there. Amen? There was people within the church of Corinth that because they stood for the things that Paul first taught them, they were kicked out of the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, read Philemon. Read um, Titus. Read um, Timothy. He talks about different people. Okay? Understand that when you stand for the Lord. Amen? But God wants us to bring about equality. I'm a funny person. When I see somebody hurting I, and I have something, I want them to have what I have. You know what I mean? And I'm not just talking about spiritually have what I have. I'm talking about financially have what I have. I'm talking about, you know, sometimes I think about things and, 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 and ways that I can help somebody and I try to reason through them, you know? And, and it doesn't always work out, trust me. It doesn't because the person's not ready. I've helped people that really needed the help but didn't really want the help. You know what I mean? And I still try to help them, even though I don't. And it just seems to make it worse sometimes, you know? But the love that I have for Christ wants me to make them equal. See, I don't have a lot, but what I have, I want them to have. I don't want to see them suffer. Amen? You see, and that's what Paul's saying. Listen, it doesn't have anything to do with the money. You know, I read this story, Bev, this week, and I was cross-referencing this. And I went into um, Numbers, right? And they were talking about the manna falling. No, I'm sorry. I was in Numbers on a different story. It's Exodus. I was in Exodus, right? And they talked about the manna falling. When it first came, right, it was like the dew on the ground. And it was a super light wafer. Amen? That tastes like honey. It tastes like oats and honey, like the best thing you could ask for. You know what I mean? Right? And so God said, I'm going to show you what this is. I want you to go out. Send some to collect a lot. Send some to collect a little. Amen? Right? And then they brought it back, right? And when they measured it, everyone had the same. Some went out and collected a lot. Some went out and collected a little. But when they measured it, they each got an F up per person. You didn't get more than what you thought. You didn't get less than what you thought. Why? Because the God's people have equality. They're the same to God, amen? And then after that, he said, guess what? If you try to collect more than what you need, which was the effa he showed them that they're equal to have, if you go out and try to collect more, amen, it's going to spoil. The only day that it won't spoil is on the Sabbath day, amen? You can collect twice as much and prepare it for the next day. See, and some went out and they tried to collect more. And what happened? The next morning there was maggots in it. See, if we try to get ahead of each other and think that we're something we're not. I've been in churches where they literally segregate people by wealth. They segregate people by education. Listen, they're not doing it on purpose. When I say they do that, it's because they think they're something they're not. And they do it on their own. See? Okay? Okay. I don't care if you come in off the street homeless. You're going to be treated like somebody who lives up on the hill. Amen? Because in Christ we're equal. And Paul was telling the church to have that equality. Our Paul says it all the time. It's not about the money you give, it's about the heart you have. Amen? Equality comes from the heart. I don't even know why I'm sharing this with you today. You want to know why? Because I believe that everyone here has that. But isn't it a great refresher? Isn't it a great refresher? These people may have become bitter, right? Hearing about what the things that are being said about them and this and that. And they don't want to get. Why should we give to those people? Why should we do that? You know what equality is? We should do it more. 
We should share it more. Amen? It's a beautiful thing. Look at, watch, let's finish reading that. 13, yeah? Our desire is not that others might be uh, relieved while you are hard-pressed, but that there might be equality. Listen to this. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply your needs. Amen? Let me tell you, can I share something with you guys? That other church isn't going to give back to them. Paul's not saying you're giving to receive something from them. No. He's saying that you're going to be filled in your heart with plenty because you know they're taken care of. Amen? And let me tell you something. We're better than that. When you surrender yourself like that to the Lord, when He calls you to something, then you know who's got your back. You know what I learned a long, long time ago? I learned this a long time ago, and I love it because it has ruled my life. That when I'm about God's business, He takes care of mine. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about my business. You ever live in life without worrying about tomorrow, without worrying about today, without worrying about all these things that are coming against you? You ever, you ever have that peace? That real peace? You know why it is? Because you're serving Him and His will righteously. And you know that if you're serving Him and His will righteously, amen, that He's going to provide everything you need. You think that the, this prophet prophesied about Jerusalem going through a famine just so that their needs could be met? Huh? Worldly needs? No. It was more important for the spiritual need to be met. See? To bring that church and this church together as one body equal. Amen? And for our hearts to be one with Christ and equality with each other. You see it? It was way more important, Paul, for you and me to come together in Christ as one than it is for me to have something you don't have over you. Because that's what would have happened. Oh, look what we did for those people. You know, like they owe me something. I got something on them now. That's the way the world thinks, right? And Paul's telling them, no. It's greater than that. Do you really think that, that this was written like this so they could expect something in return? Doesn't it go against every principle of the Bible that we teach in giving? Hmm? Right? You have to have the understanding that everything, that giving is greater than receiving. Amen? Watch, let's start in the, let's, let's finish right here first. Where was I, 14? At the present time, your plenty will supply what they, what they need so that in turn, their plenty will supply, you, will supply what you need. Then there will be equality. As it is written, he who gathers much, this is what um, caused me to go into Exodus. He's quoting, he's quoting um, God talking to Moses in Exodus. As it is written, he who gathers much did not have too much. And he who gathered little did not have too little. Amen? Amen. See, because when it's about God, you can go out and gather a whole bunch or you can gather a little, you're going to come to the same place. Amen. Amen? See? You get it? What happens, Paul, when we die and we go to heaven? Do you think because you lived a better life than I lived that there's going to be different levels and you're going to be up here and I'm going to be down here? You know what I mean? It's like uh, the old story. There's a story that they used to tell in the Baptist church. It was kind of funny. You know, there's the, um, you got whatever you deserved by what you, how you lived. You know what I mean? And so uh, this guy, he was a multi-millionaire on earth. He had everything the world had to offer, you know. And he gets to heaven, he's got a little hut. Got this little hut, you know. It's by the beach, you know what I mean? He could see the crystal water and and enjoy life there, you know. But over this little, this little hill, he could see this valley with a great mansion in it. And one day he asked St. Peter, he said, I got this little hut and I'm happy and everything, but who's, who's, whose house is that in the valley? Oh, that was your gardener on earth. 
Yeah. See? I don't believe that. The Bible said that God has gone to prepare a place for us, amen? And in my Father's house, uh, there's many rooms. There's a mansion with many rooms, amen? I don't think that some get the master bedroom and some get the little toilet room, you know what I mean? Amen? We're so equal in heaven. I, can I share it with you, Kathy? The equality he wants us to have here in heaven, we're going to be just like Christ. There's going to be no sin there. So if there's no sin there and we live there, we're going to be just like God. Right? Christ died to give you equality with him. He died to give you his life. And he died to give it to you eternal. Do you think that you think that that do you think that that changes cuz we live here? No. I always had this thing in my heart and it's always been here. When it comes down to to spiritually, scripturally, okay? I want you guys to have more than I have. I want you to call me, Matt, come on. Matt, check out this. Matt, look what God showed me. I, I, I want to be, I, I, I'm supposed to be the leader and I want to be led because I want more for you than what I have. Amen? But what did I just say? Hey, come on, Matt, check this out. I, I, you're going to want me to be equal with you. See the beauty of it? That we could all just come together. Watch what it says. And as Christians, it should be more than just spiritual. Amen? When we know a brother or sister is in need or is hurting, we should be there for them. Then there will be equality. As it is written, he who gathers much. I read all that, huh? Okay, let's go back up to 8.1. You guys there? And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given to the Macedonian church. Amen? There's a grace, uh, an understanding that they had in giving. Okay? The Macedonia church was a brand new church. And they were so full of life. And, and let me tell you, they had nothing. They were a very poor community. Do you know that the, the largest church in the world today is a little church in um, uh, Korea? And that little church has over a million members? And do you know that the poverty there is the worst poverty, than, that almost worse than anywhere else in the world? And that church does more in ministry than any other church in the world? Do you want to know why? Because they take the little bit they have, amen, see, and they give it, and there's so many of them that the little bit they have goes further than big ministry churches that you see today. You believe that? There's churches today within our own community that, are, that have 30, 40, 50 million dollars in the bank. Building brand new buildings, buying brand new warehouses, doing just boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's amazing stuff, right? Buying whole sections of land for parking and, 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 and a whole fleet of buses to pick people up from the parking and take them to the church and back. I mean, it's just amazing the things that these people are doing, amen? And this little church that was, that was so poor did way more in ministry with the little bit that God has given them, amen? That's equality. You understand? That's a beautiful thing. And, and there's, a, there's a grace about giving. It's understanding the, the grace God has... You know what? I'm going to share this with you this way. Okay? A lot of the, the New Testament writers, they start off saying, the, the grace and mercy of God be, and peace be with you, don't they? Do you know why they start off that way? Because you can't have them unless you're in Christ. Do you understand? So when he's talking about the grace right here the Macedonian church had, it was the grace of giving. It was, it, you, can't have them, you can't have them either, Kathy, if you don't give them back. When the Bible said that if you don't forgive your brother when he sins against you, your heavenly Father won't forgive you your sins, okay? If you don't give grace, you don't have grace. If you're not merciful, you don't have mercy. See that? If, you don't, if you're not a peacemaker, you have no peace. You get it? You can't have it. That's a beautiful thing right here. It's talking about the grace of giving with the Macedonian church. Watch this. And now, brothers, when we want you to know that the grace that God has given the Macedonian church out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy 
and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Amen? Here's what he's saying. As poor as they were, as poverty-stricken as they are, with all the trials and all the things they're going through, amen, when they came to Christ, all they wanted to do is give back what was given them. Sometimes we lose that as Christians, don't we? Do you remember what was given you when you surrendered to Christ? Do you remember that? That's what God expects us to give others, to bring others where we are. You get the equality? That's a beautiful thing. It's so hard for us to live that way because we live in the world. Amen? But you know what the Bible says? That even though you're in this world, you're no longer of this world. I've called you. I've called you. You're my sons. You're my daughters. Amen? You're saved by my grace. That salvation is, is, is a permanent thing as far as I'm concerned, okay? But that grace that everybody says they live in, right, is only really lived in when we give it back to somebody else. Because otherwise you don't understand what it is you're living in. See that? And when you give it back, what do you do? You're giving them what was given you so that they can be with you. Isn't that the greatest thing? <laughs> you need to behave yourself, Alex. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a joy, isn't it? And you know, it's funny because you know what becomes a crazy joy? You want to you know? Yeah, you're ahead of me, right? But you know what becomes a crazy joy to me? Is when somebody's crazy mad, right? And I can't calm them down. They're out of control. And all I want to do is give them grace. All I want to do is love them more. All I want to do is share more about, you know, what they... I, they're like out of control. And I just want to just be like, oh, man. You know, I just want to, I want to give them the, 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 what God gave me when I was out of control. You know, and there's such a great joy about that. Why? Because we have an expectation that they're going to have what we have. See that? We live in reality when we see through the eyes of Christ. You get it? That's beautiful. Watch what it says. Am I in three? For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability entirely on their own. They did it entirely. Look at A lot of times we try to talk each other into things or we try to... I, the one thing I hate... I hate this in the church. I hate this in the church, and I've seen it my whole life in the church, is manipulation. I hate manipulation. You understand? I will never try to manipulate you, Alex, ever, for any reason. Okay? But I still have an expectation that be, the love that God has for you, you're going to share with others. See that? If God called you to something, I have an expectation that through the power of the Holy Spirit that you're seeking every day, amen, that He's going to lead you into what He's called you to. I have an expectation that if He's called you to that, that He's going to provide along the way every need you have to complete it. Amen? Amen? But I'm not going to try to manipulate you to get something done that I want done in the world, in the church, in the world, in the church, the world in the church. Amen? I've seen the movie over and over and over again, the manipulation. Haven't you seen it? Huh? Uh, Granny, I keep going back to the one at the, at the cancer center with the lady that was going to sacrifice again for her pastor to have a new airplane. Well, I just don't know if I could sacrifice this time. She had made sacrifice after sacrifice for him to have a different plane. I just want a Chrysler 300, just so you guys know. It doesn't even have to be new. I, I want a, like a creamy white one with gold trim. No. I can't even ask for that anymore. You know why Sandy got me one? Yeah. It was at Costco in a box about that big. But it's beautiful. If you guys want to see it, it's in my office. Hey, Amen. Sandy loves me. <laughs> it's funny though, right? Right? That's how, that's, 
That's, you know, I felt so equal with all those other pastors that have those cars when she gave that to me. Amen. Amen. You know why? Yeah. You know why it had nothing to do with the car, it had to do with Sandy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The heart of Sandy. Where am I at? Four. Four? They, they um, eagerly pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the saints. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful thing? When was the last time we eagerly pleaded to serve God? And they did not do as we expected, but gave themselves first to the Lord and then to, to us in keeping with God's will. Amen? You guys catch that? Here's what they thought. They thought because they were asking that they were going to come to them first. No, they did it because of God. Amen? That's what I was trying to tell you guys earlier that we don't really know God or have the grace of God or have His mercy or peace in our life unless we're giving it. That's God's will. See that? They didn't come to man, Alex. They went to God. And they, they wanted to live in God's will first. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Watch this. It gets better. The, and they did not do as we expected. I already read that, didn't I? Keeping God's will. Six. So we urged Titus, since he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. Amen? It goes back to verse 1. This act of grace on your part. Grace is an unmerited favor you give to somebody when they don't deserve it. Amen? That's what God calls us to. That's what he's calling us to with every single person in our life to give them the unmerited favor he gave us when we were undeserving of it. Amen? It's beautiful, isn't it? You see it? And I'm sure the Macedonians had run-ins with those Jewish people, huh? Right? But because they were so grateful that they were saved and understood who Christ was in their life, they wanted to give that to even those who came against them. It's beautiful. Everybody's like, yeah, okay. But just as you excelled in everything, in faith and speech and knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. Amen? Here's what he's saying. You got my first letter? You understood it? You received it? You came back to yourselves in Christ, your senses, amen? As you did that, do this as well. See, because none of that would, would mean anything if you didn't follow through. You ever been in a relationship where... You ever been in a relationship... <laughs> I think Richard threw me off there. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, re, let's rephrase it. You ever have somebody staying in your house and you know it's just going to be a little longer but you're so sick of having him there? Yeah. Huh? Has every one of us experienced that? Yeah. Right? You know it's just going to be a little longer, but you're so sick of having him there, right? Right? What comes out? I mean, you only, sometimes you only got a week or two left, and you've been putting up with for months or a year or something, and, and, and you only have a couple weeks left, and what comes out? Anger, <laughs> hatred... Every little thing they do wrong, you bring up. You can't stand it. You're just on fire about it, right? Right? See, that's what happens in a Christian's life sometimes. God doesn't want that for us. If we just waited the two weeks, and we would go out righteously. Be careful what you pray for. Okay. <laughs> right? But we would just go out righteously, right? And that's what he's saying right here. Where was I? Well, I wanted to back up. Let's start in seven, okay? Because I don't know where I'm at. Okay, but just as you excelled in everything, in faith and speech and knowledge and com um, complete earnestness in your love for us, see that you also excel in the grace of giving. See? Excel. Finish it. Don't get all... You know what I mean? Right? Get it? You need, to, you need to finish what you started. Actually, you need to let Christ finish what he started in you. Let it come to completion. See? 
Don't, don't, don't do those worldly things like we do. Huh. I've had to calm people down a few times and be like, come on, it's just a little bit longer. Let's, let's go out righteously. Let's do this righteously. We said we would do this. Let's finish it. Amen? I've had to do that within the church. Let's finish it. You know when somebody's in leadership, Richard, and they mess up in the church? A lot of times the pastor or other people in the church will just tell them to step down and they'll kick them out and everything else. They'll just do crazy things. They'll gossip about them, tell everybody. All this stuff, you know, will come down on these people. You know what happens when I see something, Joan? I go to the person, I said, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to make it right or are you going to step down? And I make them make the choice. And I don't care what it is. I've caught people on some crazy stuff, Kathy. Okay? And then I tell them when they make the right choice, if anybody finds out, I'll be responsible. I'll be the one responsible. You want to know why? Because I want to restore my brother. I don't want to tear him down. Amen. Why? Because I want equality with him. Amen? And I've seen some crazy things, let me tell you. And a lot of times people step down and walk away from the church. They even come back later and say, you know what? You told me to leave. I said, I never told you to leave. I told you to make a choice. I never even told you to leave the church. I told you to make a choice about leadership, about being in Christ, setting the right example, or going into the world and doing the things you're doing. You had to make the choice, not me. I never made it for anybody yet. Amen? They usually step down because they're unwilling to change it, or they fix it. And they, and they humble themselves before the Lord. Amen? I've even gone as far as to go with them to fix it. Mm -hmm. And to people's homes and all kinds of stuff to help them fix it. Amen? You see it? You get it? We need to finish what God started. We need to let God finish what He started. Amen? Where am I? Eight. I am not com uh, commanding you but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. And now here's what he's saying. I'm not trying to bring up the Macedonian church. I'm just trying to remember, I'm just trying to remind you of who you're supposed to be in Christ. Amen. I'm just trying to show you the earnestness of a new believer. The way you should believe, the way you should have never stopped believing. You understand? Isn't it funny? I, it, it, Christians, right? They're on fire when they first get saved. You know what used to cripple me, Alex, when I was a young Christian man? Huh? Somebody would be on fire, right? And so I would get on fire again, you know what I mean? I'd be all excited like them, and, and then I'd go to the elders of the church and tell them what's going on, and they oh, they're new Christians. They'll burn out after a while. I've had that told to me from the elders of the church when I was a young Christian. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Why? Because, right, you see it, right? You see the young Christian on fire, and then after they've been a Christian for a while, they kind of, yeah, and they're just living the Christian life, but they're not on fire anymore, you know? And people want them to burn out. Why? Because then they don't have